I didn't like photographing strangers. I didn't feel comfortable around strangers. I loved my friends. I thought something amazing was going on. The skinhead was important for the fact is you, you, do, you didn't compromise, you know, and anyone that was had that in their character and in their personality would have been attracted to skinheads more than they would have been punks or rockabillies because, you know, you can always, if you worked in the shoe shop, you put your hair down in the week and then you put it up at the weekend, a weekend punk. But when you're a fucking skinhead, mate, that was it. You're going to have to go to for an audition, as, I mean, uh, interviews as a skinhead, you're going to have to fucking lose your virginity as a skinhead. You're a skinhead. Now, I, I liked that commitment. To find something that defined you, you know, it's very powerful narcotic, really. Especially for somebody with no, you know, that actually just doesn't feel that they exist and all of a sudden they're like the centre of attention from nothing just because they've had a fucking haircut. Well, that's one of the first pictures of my brother before he all skinheads. Because he was a rock and roller. You know, he, he was a teddy boy from six. So he was this little teddy boy walking about like James Dean. And then he, then the skinhead thing came along and that was that. I think that's, this photograph here was when I got my first, when I got my lymphosome one. And I went over to test it. And of course, you know, Neville was, was my brother. So he's, he was my model. But as soon as he became a skinhead, he basically became an adult skinhead that had looked like he'd just been shrunk to that big. I took him downtown, man, me and my mate Simon, four years older, and it was just like taking fucking Elvis. Because he looked so brilliant. And of course, all these skinheads came, these terrifying fuckers when you were 14, these fuckers were terrifying. And they weren't like our generation, they were the mid 70s generation, and they were just monsters. They were in and there was just, Going to Borstal was part of the course. They were wild and scary and vicious. And we were 14, but fucking, and I was a bit of a div with the camera. And uh, of course, they walked around the corner and saw Neville, and that was it, mate. It's like, you're being our ass mascot. So they just fucking kidnapped him and made him their mascot. So all of a sudden, we're in the, we're in the middle of, you know, one of the biggest, quite most ferocious skinhead gangs out there. And that's it. And then we became skinheads for the next 10 years and, you know, relationships were developed. People come in and out and died. And, and that was, our, and that was our, our world for a few years. And that's the start of it. And there's Neb standing there and Simon. Being a skinhead was a very personal thing, and to me, it gave me freedom of expression. Where most people go, what do you want to dress like everyone else for? It's like, and you're not. But you're not. Even though it's quite restricted on what you can wear, I found it quite liberating. And I'd always experiment as well. And each gang in each different area would have something different about them. Kensington Market, the Levi's were very important. And in fact, they were the only jeans, really. Denim jackets, the, the 501s. And there was only one shop, one shop that sold them. So yeah, that was us just coming back with our, with our newly bought skinhead attire. 